Hey, it's Mitch Nader, Survival, and today we're going to be doing a one minute sustainable fire. Hang tight. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is look for some twigs. So let's get to it. Okay, so I'm a big fan of using, of using eastern white pine twigs. You know they're dry when they have a nice little snap to them. Okay, so instead of taking all these little twigs off of here, I just take a little further back on the branch where all the twigs are attached to. But I always like to leave a little bit attached to the tree because you can hang tools and stuff on it. So I'm going to take it right about here. See a nice snap? This is good material. There's a lot of twigs on here. So I'm going to grab a few more of these branches and we'll get to work. Alright, so this is pretty common. When you um, are having trouble finding branches in, in the trees, you have a lot of really tall pines and all the branches are pretty much broken off. You can usually find a branch that busted off a higher tree and it's laying on the ground. Now, you can use this as well, absolutely, but you have to be smart about it. You want to grab the twigs that are facing up, that aren't touching the ground. See that? Now this branch, it's just like the branch on the tree. Okay, So I can take all of this and all these twigs attached like that. So here's a whole other branch and it wasn't even attached to a tree, it's laying on the ground. I'm more apt to use these on the ground before I am the trees. Let me explain why. This is my number one resource when it's pouring out. Thunderstorms, all that stuff. Um, really bad snowstorms as well because snow sticks where water might run off. And the material on the ground will have a chance to soak up more moisture than in the trees, okay? Even though it's higher up. It's still a viable option, but it will have a little more moisture than the ones hanging in the trees. Okay, so uh, if it's raining out, I usually try to grab a bunch of these on the ground first, and I save the ones in the trees for when I really need it, okay? If it's just drizzling out and stuff's kind of damp, it's been raining for a day or two, no big deal, I'll grab this stuff. Make sure it has a nice snap to it, and move about my business but you know if it's been raining for two weeks every single day you know and it's in the 30s and 40s like it does in the northeast uh, you know in the beginning and very late stages of winter as a transition period um, you get a lot of sleet and all that <laughs> nice migrating birds um, you know you you tend to uh, you tend to not be able to use this stuff because it's really brutal if it's been raining for two weeks this stuff is, even the stuff's wet, even when it's hanging up. So you want to grab the stuff in the trees. So I like to save the stuff in the trees when I absolutely drop dead need it. And then it's pretty much a guaranteed fire. I've never failed using, uh, you know, twigs off of a eastern white pine off the trunk in any weather. It just absolutely doesn't happen. Um, you got to just stick with it and just make sure it's dry, you know. And if it's not dry, if it still feels wet, and it bends a little bit, but it still snaps. But it takes a little while before it snaps. I mean, it's dry in the middle and not on the outside. So I make feather sticks out of it. I did a, uh, a winter fire igniting feather sticks vid. Check that one out. Uh, that's a common situation. That was with maple. Okay, Maple tends to hold more moisture than pine does. And it doesn't have, doesn't have any flammable resin. It still works awesome. And that maple that I harvested uh, in that video, I actually took off a branch laying on the ground. The branches were, were just facing up in the air. Okay, so I'm going to grab a few more and we'll, uh, we'll move along. Okay, so here's an example of some branches in, in pines hanging right here and right here. These are completely good to go and these are what I would save. Now, I call these uh, skeleton branches and the reason being is that they remind me of like a like a skeleton's hand hanging off the tree with all these like little fingers, all, all the twigs just kind of hanging off and they're so dead, they're like bones, you know, so kind of remind me of skeleton hands. Um, so that's what I call them. Yeah, this is just a habit I have. Um, it works really well when it's wet out, a lot of water on the ground. It's put what I'm going to use for fire on my rug. Move that aside. I don't need to worry about that today. It hasn't rained in a while. So I'm going to clear the spot. I'll get back to it. Okay, first order of business. 
is separating the two. Um, the two materials I'm, I'm thinking about, not saying, <laughs> sorry, is uh, the thicker sticks or the, the parent sticks from the twigs that are going off of the branches, okay? Okay, so I have twigs. Let's pull all these twigs off. Every single one I can. Just drop them right on my rock. Okay, so as you can see, I have a ton of twigs. I also have a ton of mid and larger pieces. So I have a good amount of prep here. So if I run into any problems, I shouldn't have any issues um, throwing some more wood on there. And there's definitely a couple fires worth here um, to get going, you know. And after that, I can just throw whatever I want on there. Okay, so this is where I'm going to have my fire. Got some birch bark here. Left the side. I'm going to just make a little raft. A little platform. Just the ground through conduction is going to hinder the progress of my flame and my heat. It's cold, it's wet. So by building a little structure off of it, I do a couple things. I stop my tinder, my birch bark, whatever I'm using, I'm using natural material this time, you can use man-made, whatever you want, um, but basically it'll stop it from sitting on, you know, cold wet ground. And as it burns down, it's going to actually create a nice ember bed. That's plenty. Okay, so let's go ahead and ignite it. I'm going to change my angle for you. Now, I just want to mention something real quick about these gloves. I think they're awesome, these fingerless gloves. Uh, the reason, reason being is they give me the dexterity and the ability to use my knife like I always can and my ferro rod so I can, you know, light fires very easily, even when it's cold. You know, like right now it's in uh, low 40s, possibly high 30s, but it feels like low 40s. It's definitely, you know, the sun's gone, so it's getting, it's getting cold. But, you know, I really like having the ability to keep my hands warm and stop shaking because, you know, when your hands start shaking and you have to light a fire, <laughs> that's a bad situation, you know, because if your hands are shaking, you know, you're cold, you need that fire that much more. And, you know, if, um, if something like gloves, fingerless gloves, can make the difference between getting a fire in 30 seconds and getting a fire in a half hour because you can't light your tinder properly by using your ferro rod, kind of a no-brainer right so I just wanted to throw that little uh, tidbit out there about these gloves um, I think they're a pretty cool piece of kit okay so I'm gonna go ahead and just scrape my birch bark It's actually very papery, which I don't really prefer for this. I like it to be a little harder because then it really scrapes into um, a nice pile of uh, powder. This is kind of more like in strips. So it's a little harder to ignite initially, but it burns with a larger flame and hotter. So like this piece right here would be good for it. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, get the clock running. Once I ignite my birch bark, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I have my bundles of twigs off to the side. I have two handfuls. There it is. Put my knife to the side. Grab my bundles. Oh, gotta stop my clock. Okay. So it's probably one second off on my clock, so I'll add a second. Add the next stage.
here and the next stage from here. Move my wood away. I'm at 39 seconds right now and I got a huge fire going. Let's see if I can get down the frame. Right? This thing's feet tall. Okay, so this is more like a 35 second fire or whatever the case is, but let's see if I can get that in frame for you guys. It doesn't take long to get a good sustainable fire going. You know, I mean 30, 40 seconds, but definitely under a minute. And that's with natural materials. I didn't use um, any man-made tinder to get going. You know, I didn't use a wet fire or anything like that. Okay, so this is a great uh, exercise to practice and try out. And you should give it a shot. Alright, so it's been Mitch and Nate Survival. Now, if you have a channel on YouTube and you're watching this, feel free to give this exercise a shot. Um, and I'd love, I'd love to see some, uh, some poster response videos and um, if you fail or, or if you succeed and I'll link them to this or you can uh, make a new series out of it and we'll call it uh, One Minute Fire let's try that kind of like the Axis Back Project okay so it's been Mission Survival appreciate your views, your comments and your support and I still have you know, a bunch of material left all my stages, you know? I mean, tons of twigs, tons of everything. So, if I have any issues, I can just chuck it all back on. Well, I'll see you guys in the next vid. Take care.